Right, we'll give this a try and see if we can uh, get it filmed. It's not a brilliant and sunny day, so it's going to be quite difficult. But we'll give it a try. Right, I'm halfway done through this one. Flash it off, I'll put some of the white lines on, just doing the next lot. I've got a sheet of uh, markings, so I know where everything needs to be. Right, so I need to now do my 14mm, uh, 7mm gap for the red, and then on top of that we'll then do the other line. So it's just a case of uh, measuring up and marking. How is everyone to do? Hope you're all fine. We need some tape. This is a fine line tape. Uh, can be got from various uh, online factors and local shops. Oh, I that one. Trim it off. Right, with this, you want to try and be fairly smooth. So I jam it there. Try not to get my head in the way. So I line it up in the first one, using the second one as the mark. And if you can hear uh, banging what in the background, that's the border collie decided to play with his toys. And I just go all the way around, keeping a nice gentle tension. see that happening because it also spreads out the irregularities in your measurements so not quite right that's the beauty of this tape you can take it off again and just let it gently flow around the part I know what's wrong I've got my glasses on <laughs> Right, that's uh, no good. Get rid of the glasses. Right, what's going on here? better and it is doing my head in because I'm having to put the lining on squint to match the original so it doesn't cause any problem with the rest of the engine um, which is uh, not my way of having neat and tidy and on the computer I've also got um, a reference picture as well of the uh, the cladding so uh, I'm not I'm going the right direction So that's the wide area, so that will be red, and then once that's all dried, the cream will go on that to give two little bands of red around the, the edge. Uh, lots of different ways of doing it, this is the way I do it. So the next one is the one millimeter band there. So uh, this is 10 millimeter tape, so it uh, holds a fairly straight line 
uh, measure that about there, that'll be fine. And one thing you don't do is let the stuff get anywhere near hairs or carpet fibres or that. Because it gets very hairy and then that affects your sharp edge. Right, for the millimetre line, I actually do it freehand. Or close to freehand. Let's just make sure we're starting about the right place. Yep, one mil. So, same as before. That's where you sometimes you have to be a bit of an octopus. So, I'm just following the line round, keeping a nice gentle tension on the tape. Aiming for my way mark, which is actually just right on the edge of the uh, hole for the uh, clamp valve. So I'll peel it off there again, and nice and gentle. Follow it round. Right to the end. There's a wee ding there in the clan that cause a problem with it lifting. Right, let's get the old scale and a wee bit thin there. Not bad, just a wee bit thin there so as I say, beauty of this tape. As you can peel it off to your heart's content. So, just as we went over the, the aperture there, we lost our thickness retouch. But you can peel this stuff off and on, off and on to your heart's content. That's looking better. Spot on. Right, so we have a red, thick red, which will have cream on top eventually. Thin red, thin red, thick red. So that is that. Yep. Right, I'm just checking that the tape is sitting nicely down in that hole there, in the ding in the cladding, which it is. Um, not taking any of the dings out of the cladding because. Some of them are there to make it fit around bits and pieces, so that's that. So, that's that one. Right, we'll flatten the next piece, and as I say, rinse and repeat. Right. So this is the uh, cladding piece before um, cleaning, so nice and shiny. And it's, it's quite strange, because we take the shine off it, to then put the lining on and then we put cl um, clear coat on top which gives the shine back um, which is a bit counterintuitive but uh, there we go so for this yeah, we'll get the dirty rags So I use um, 400 grit wet and dry as my initial um, cleaning. Hmm, okay, oh, that's right. that. And a little block of wood as my flatting block. Right, let's get started. So it's just a case gentle rub down, running basically in the direction of the metal tin, so you don't create a, a hole with a flat in it. Then get it a wipe off, and that is almost ready. 
as you can see, there's a few little dings. So what I'll do when I've finished doing the major bit with the block, I'll actually um, do the last bit with the fingers, just to get into those little dings that are in the, the cladding. And just watch when you're at the edges that you don't uh, break through the, the edge. And there's a little tribute around the edge of a uh, bolt or something that's on the, the engine. So a wee bit of water on the panel and give it to rub. And then you actually hear it going from very quiet to slightly louder effect on the, the rubbing as it breaks through. Not oh, fan a cup of tea has just arrived. Thank you. So as you can see, we've taken the, the shine off because that then lets the paint stick better and round here there's a little shaping around the bolt or something so we'll do that by hand. Uh, and the little pits. So we just keep going at that. And I'm putting very little pressure on the block. I'm just letting it skate across and do its job. Because when we come to clear coat, that'll bring all the shine back up and seal everything in. And this uh, cladding belongs to Chris B on the forum. So give it a wee wipe off. See how we're doing. Right, turn it around. And just take the going to be sore tomorrow. But there we go. Not doing anything tomorrow. Right, let's see how that looks. Right, for the main bit of cleaning off, that will do us. Take the water and block out and we'll just use the wet and dry as it is. Just to flat down where the slight undulations might be so we don't break through the the uh, colour coat I sprayed this uh, two and a half days ago something like that That looks, looks looking good. Fairly uniform uh, flatness to that. And let's get this last bit done. And then we'll put some tape on, make sure you that going on, ready for uh, painting red. Orange peel there for some reason. Just give that a wee rub down. Right, see how that looks. That looks better. We touch there. So as you can see, it's not using a huge amount. It's a very gentle process. Mm. 
Right. A little bit over the back here. Let's just get the paint stick that wee bit better. Like that. Right, I'll leave that to dry for a wee minute and we'll come back in a minute. Right, we're back, so let's get rid of the towels. So we're going to line this piece out now. And it's the same, so yep. Right, okay, I've got my drawings. So I'm going from 10mm to 13mm on this one. So it's 13mm at the top here. And 10mm down the other end. One's a wee bit uh, trickier, Boing. but not too much of a problem. Uh, same again, get the tape. We always order twice the amount of tape you think you'll need. Same again. Uh, going from 10 to 13 right? so we're expanding outwards. So this is somewhat a bit of a guesswork. Basically, you try and get a long line and slowly but surely you add distance on the tape as you go across. Tape is flexible, so if you pull it too much, you will distort it out. But you get used to be able to pull a reasonable length, anyway, so that's a wee bit shallow. So, as I say, out again. time you get the other side. Then you look at it and see, yes, that's pulling a fairly straight line, so I'm happy with that. And we've hit our mark. So, stick the retail on the end. That's that one. So, the markings are all the same, so it's one half mil red, four mil cream, one half mil red, so hence seven mil. This 
this is just a plastic um, with a, a wax pencil. And I use white for this because it shows up on most colours. And it's only the tiniest little mark just to get our waypoint for uh, putting the, the tape on. And as they say, the painting is 99% preparation. Almost there. A couple of more marks here. Don't you'll even be able to see them on the camera. Right, like that. Hello, puppy dog. Back to our tape. As I say, don't let the tape get hairy. <laughs> You'll curse yourself later for it. Right. So just hold it just beyond, line up your first two marks, set your tape down, peel it back, get your dots in line. Slowly but surely, go around the panel. And the smoother you can do it, the better your final line. Now just to create a tail on the end so when I'm taking this stuff off I don't get covered in paint. This is easy doing straight lines, um, it's when you do uh, fancy curves and what have you. So, quick recheck, 7mm, 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 perfect. Right, and back to the single. Boom, 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 oh, zoop. Well, the outside is frightful. It's more delightful. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> and since it's the one millimeter, I'll just do this freehand again. Just a quick recheck. Right, one mil. Once you see it, you can get it easy by hand, no problem. So, yeah, again, get the tape started. One fluid motion. I'm not, this isn't ideal holding it up in the, the air to let you see it. Noticed the other piece has got a wee bit of a kink in it. Just in the end there. That's better. Right. For popping. Quick re measure. One mil. set lining up. So what we'll do is we'll do the rest of the lining because it's a case of rinse and repeat. Once we've got it all finished I'll bring you back and uh, show you the painting. Catch you a bit. Well 
Put them again. Paint out, the brush out, and we have some cladding. So <laughs> you may as well watch some uh, some painting. Almost as good as watching painting dry. But we'll see. Double glazing off makes it easier. Uh, very simple. One shot red. A wee mark to just to clean the brush out if I need to. Um, there is a skin in the pot there, so I've just cut a slot in the, the skin and uh, use the uh, pot itself as the uh, palette. So get the line started and just go over it. Da -da -da. Uh, can't do the old uh, painting jokes, uh, not politically correct anymore. Um, uh, yeah, we'll get the red on. This will take about a week to dry um, to the point where I can uh, give it a wee sanding and uh, lay the tape on for doing the white or the ivory to be more precise. So, with it being a straight line, very easy to keep a wet edge because. That's how you get a nice smooth surface, is keeping that wet edge. And when you finish brushing, you always finish coming off the paint in an upward brush. Because then you don't get any brush marks in it. And stuff like that. So, lay it down. I'm not putting huge amounts of pressure on the brush here, just to just enough to get the paint to flow and stick onto the, the surface. And as Bob Ross used to say, happy thoughts, happy brush, happy paint. <laughs> I don't know if MD has ever watched uh, Bob Ross back in the, uh, the, the early 90s or the 80s. Um, I used to be an avid watcher of him doing his paintings. But, uh, I don't have enough imagination to do that sort of painting anyway. So uh, we just plod on with uh, laying some paint down. And uh, this is actually the 24th of December 2017. So, uh, everybody, hopefully you're uh, fitting well and ready to enjoy the festive season in whichever manner that you do that. I'm not doing anything much. Uh, Christmases between 2010 and 13, I actually spent most of Christmas Day working on the traction engine. Oh, there's a wee hair there, so I'll just push the hair out of the way. Come on. There we go. Deep looking brush. And then that's that line. Palette the brush and back to the top. That seems to be going all right for the video. Um, this is actually my computer desk, so but it's basically a general workbench as well. What I do with this is I paint on and I'm going to have enough time to do all the painting before the uh, first part starts to skin up on the first part of the cladding and before it starts to really dry I actually pull all the tape off because that allows the edge of the paint to relax and create a better seal against the surface 
and if the paint was dry and you peeled the tape off you've got a good chance of tearing the paint uh, and actually making a jagged edge and the least jagged edges you've got when you're painting the better and holding this panel out here for your camera is really doing my back in at the moment I normally have it a lot closer to myself I don't think I'm cheering anymore Maybe a bit better So the neater you can be, even though you've got the tape there, try not to put too much on the tape, the better thing will be in the end. So let's round that edge. Right, we look at it. Uh, that's looking mighty fine. Right, next line. Do the both at the same time here because it's uh, easier for holding at present. And we just brush, brush away. Um, I did forget to put my headphones on so I can carry on listening to uh, some music. But I don't put the music on when I've got uh, recording because uh, I don't want a copyright strike from Google or YouTube. Uh, so, uh, da, 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 watch it there as we dent in the cladding. So, uh, make sure the tape is down before the brush on. It's all right if the tape lifts after you've brushed on because you're not brushing over the same place again. So. Uh, just to get that line crisp edge down. Yeah, and if this was on a full size, it's actually easier doing it um, freehand because the lines are, of course, three times bigger for a four inch engine. Uh, so you've actually got a lot more space to work in. You can do it with tape or you can just do it freehand, which some people do. There we go, up past there. That's the crucial bit to make sure that was still in there. So you're just going for a nice even coat. It's almost to the point of as thick as you dare before it starts running because mm. you want to get it the first time you don't want to have to go over these lines again once you've taken all the tape off mm. it's not difficult to put more tape on but just get it done right the first time so sometimes you get a wee bit of pullback because the tape's so close so you just add a wee bit more and give it a little rub out. So once this is all hard, it'll be a case of uh, get ready for uh, putting the ivory on top of it. And then it'll be oh, as long as I can keep it before it goes back in its box to head south to its uh, owner. Um, if I can keep it for over a month that will be better because that means that the paint will have more time to fully harden before uh, it goes into the confines of a box. Um, if we had the engine I would put the, wait a couple of weeks, put the stuff onto the engine uh, and let it dry there but because uh, it won't get crushed or 
stuck up with anything because uh, it wouldn't be in a box. Transferring painted items through the post can be problematic. But we try to mitigate the issues there as best we can. So that is doggy here. <laughs> that must have fallen off me there. Right, how does that look? There's a wee bit of thinness there. And by keeping it going, you can layer in, so if you hit a bit of thinness, it doesn't really matter, because the paint will flow into what you already have. in there so uh, we'll just lay in some more tape's pulled it slightly up the side of the tape so uh, just lay a bit more so that's what you get that will sit like that for about an hour and then we'll remove the tape and then we'll let you see what it looks like at the end catch you in a bit Well, hello folks, we're back to uh, the next phase, which is peel the tape off before it sets very hard. Uh, not much to it really, you just start peeling it off. One continuous movement, there we go. since it's all nice straight lines it is very easy to perform the task so there we go we now have the red laid down got a couple of little bits that will need teasing with the uh, Stanley knife or not the uh, scalpel I should say but that is looking Mighty fine for the standard red. So I'll do the same to the rest and then that'll be it for this now. So we'll catch you later.